Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.0. In this video, I'm going to go over how to recreate the game Candy Box. So let's get started. So if you're unfamiliar with Candy Box or its sequels or the various games that are similar to Candy Box, it's a game where you gain at least one candy per second. And then using those candies, once you have enough, you can unlock parts of the interface, you can buy items, you can just simply eat them. So if we want to copy the mechanics of Candy Box, we need to think about three central things that happen here. So the player earns one candy per second. The player can eat those candies. But when the player eats those candies, we decrease the candy count, which is increased every second. And then we increase the candy eaten count, because we want to track how many candies we've eaten. So that's two. The third mechanic is that we can unlock more of the interface as we go. Part of the game of Candy Box is that once you have earned enough candies through waiting enough seconds, you can unlock more parts of the game and do more things. So we want a small version of that, a pretty simple version of that, where we unlock parts of the interface once we have enough candies to do that. So the first thing we want to look at is earning enough per second. So we want to earn candies every second. So copying the first mechanic and Twine 2 is fairly easy. We can use the live macro and the replace macro together to count every second for us. So as you can see here, the text I have highlighted, it updates. So you have 15, 16, 17, and onward. To do this, we associate a name tag with a hook. So we have the name tag counter associated with the hook. With the current content, you have zero candies. We set an initial value to our variable count. Then we use the live macro here. We say, OK, live for every one second, repeat. And during this repeating, increase the count by one. So count is equal to it plus one. Then we'll replace the content associated with the name tag counter, which was this content right here. With the new content, you have the value of the variable count candies. So for every one second, we're increasing the count by one. And then we're updating that section updating the name tag that associated with that hook. So every one second we increase, we update, increase, update. Okay, so that was the first mechanic. We have updating candies every second. And the second one was the eating and the selling to do different things. Building on an increasing candy, we also want the ability to eat them. But here's where it gets a little bit more complicated in Twine. Twine usually acts somewhat like a state system in that you move from one passage to another. You transition between them. You can display them and you can replace things and you can link different things. But one of the core mechanics of Twine most of the time is that we are moving between passages. One passage links to another. So we're moving from state to state to state, moving across different things. If we want to change that, we have to get a little bit creative about how we decide to do that. So to recreate the candy box experience in that we always have a link to eat candies, we need to use a combination of the click macro, the link macro, the replace macro, and the display macro, all sort of together here to create a complex dynamic solution that will allow us to bounce back and forth between two passages and always have an active link that doesn't disappear or become unenchanted within the terminology of Twine 2 just by us clicking on it. Something that is always a link and when we click on it replaces itself. So we click and it refreshes, we click and it refreshes. So to do that we have to think about think back to the list of mechanics. So the very first thing we're doing here is setting the variable candy eaten to zero because we want to track that amount. And then again like we had in the previous passage we associate the name tag eat candy with this hook right here. Then we use the click macro on all of this. So when we click on the name tag, the content that is associated with the name tag, eat candy, then all of these things happen. The first that eat candy is increased by it plus count. So eat candy is increased, is increased by whatever count it was currently at. Then we reset the count to zero. Then we do two replace macros. First we replace the counter, because remember each time we're clicking on this, the counter is actually resetting. So we need to reset the counter. Then we're replacing the content associated with the name tag, eat candy. In this case, we're using the display macro. We're actually displaying the content of another passage, eat candy one. So let me pause here and bring up the content of eat candy one. Eat candy one looks like this. 
very similar to the content we just looked at. But in this case, it's a separate passage. So we have you have eaten the value of the variable eat, eaten candies, or candy eaten candies. <laughs> then we're using the link macro to create a new link with the, with the eat all candies in quotes here. So the link is eat all candies. When that is clicked on, it then does another set of things that was similar to the example we just looked at. It increases candy eaten, it resets the count, it resets the content of the name tag of the hook associated with the name tag counter. And now, in this last one, it displays the content of Eat Candy 2. Now let's pull up Eat Candy 2. Eat Candy 2 looks nearly identical to Eat Candy 1, except for this last line here that then displays the content of Eat Candy 1. So Eat Candy 1 produces a new link when clicked on displays the content of eCandy2 which produces a new link and links back to eCandy1. So like I mentioned before with Twine, bouncing between passages here, we're displaying the content of one passage which within it displays the content of another passage which displays the content of a previous passage. So we bounce back and forth using two different passages here in the display macro to allow us to constantly always have a link going and each time recreating that link and associating with our updating, updating of candy eaten and our updating account. So going back here, okay, so let's click on, we are up to 200 candies, that's quite a lot. Let's eat them all. So when I clicked on it, we had up to 202 candies and now we're back to four. I can click on it again and we see our number updates of candy eaten and our count resets. We click it again, we have 215, and then we can see, sit here and do this for however we want. So the last mechanic on the list was the interface. Because we've got our candy increasing per second, we've got our ability to eat candies whenever we want, however we want. The last thing was unlocking parts of the interface. That uses a similar mechanic construction to or two other previous mechanics. That is, the code works in the same manner in that we're using the live macro to continually update something and then we're reusing the click and link macros to link back and forth so the update to interface we use the same general concept the same approach to this in that we use two passages and then we move between them to maintain the link and we have a third passage that actually has an interface that then is associated with a hook so let me show you that in action. So we have 22 candies. I can eat them. Well, okay, so that's normal. So when that's all working together. We're updating our candies. We can eat whatever candies we want. But now we want to buy an update for 200 candies. Well, now we have to sit here and wait another five seconds or so. Okay, so we have 200 candies. And I could click on the update. We see now the the amount to update has increased so it was at 20 and now it's at 40 candies and we actually added to the interface just like it would be within candy box itself we can add things to the interface by changing replacing using the replace macro with a name tag associated with some hook so let's go look at this for a second updating the interface so we have the same general live macro code that we've been using for several passages here. We also have our candy eaten code that was in the previous passages. Then we have our third set that looks very similar to the second one, but now uses two different instances of the display macro. We're using the displaying of the passage update interface check, and we're displaying the content of interface one. And at the very top here, before I leave this, we have a name tag, content display, associated with an empty hook. That's where the interface went. When we unlocked it by buying it, we were actually sticking content, replacing content with that macro to that name tag and hook. We were just adding things to that interface. So down here at the bottom, let's look at display. Let's look at what is displayed when the display macro runs update interface check. Well, update interface check is actually just 
a conditional statement here. We check if count is greater than or equal to 20, and if it is, meaning we have at least 20 candies, then we do these things. We update content display with the content of the passage display content 1. So let's look at that for a moment. That was our health bar. Okay. So we say, okay, if we had at least candies, at least 20 candies, then go ahead and replace the name tag associated with the hook content display. So we say, okay, display that. We want to update our update counter to it plus 20. So we unlocked at 20, and the next one would be unlocking at 40. So our sort of leveling system is increasing. We reset the count. And then we do two more things. We update you have the value of the variable count candies, and then replace interface section with interface 1. Well, interface 1 and interface 2 work just like eat candy 1 and eat candy 2. They produce a new link each time. They run the check to see if it actually has 20 candies. And if we do, we do some other things. But if we don't, we go ahead and update the other two things anyway. So that the link always works and that we can always click on the link, but the update interface check actually does the math for us. If we have at least 20 candies, then it'll do something. But if we don't, then it doesn't really matter and the user can continue, can continue to click on the link and nothing will really happen. And so there we have a recreation of some of the basic mechanics of Candy Box in that we have an increasing candy count every second. We have the ability to eat candies and it, for that link to be maintained live using an alternating link macros in two different passages. And then we can update the interface using the same concept of using two different passages to maintain that link. One referencing one passage and the other referencing the previous. So interface 1, interface 2, eat candy 1, eat candy 2, bouncing back and forth between the two, maintaining the link each time. So we're actually transitioning between passages. They're just referring to each other. Interface 1, interface 2, eat candy 1 to eat candy 2. And then we can actually use other passages like we're combining here to do additional functionality and use them as if they were functions or a way to just abstract out parts of the code. Because as you noticed, update interface check actually runs in three different passages. It runs initially on updating the interface, but it also runs in interface one and it also runs in interface two. Each, all three of them, each of them call update interface check and check the count. And so, as you can see, we can combine a number of different things, all functionality within Twine 2, to recreate some of the functionality of Candybox. Thanks for watching.